You've got questions, we've got answers. Brought to you by Power Service. Hey, it's Tim, Pickup Truck Plus SUV Talk, and I have a great video for you today. I'm really excited. I have Garth, who is the Vice President of, Vice President of Sales for the Power Service Products. <laughs> I think I got enough piece there. Um, <laughs> he's fortunately offered his time today to share with you guys in the audience. We're going to talk about diesels. We're going to talk about top tier diesel. We're going to talk about the aftermath from that and all the controversy. Talk about additives, whether you need them or don't need, not need them, and reasons why. And so thank you, Garth, for being here. You bet. Absolutely. Okay, so let's kick this off. So if you've watched my other videos, and I know Garth had just watched some of my videos as well, um, I tend to read the owner's manual. I know. Shame on me. I read the owner's manual, right? And in the owner's manual, it says you must require – it's rec well, was it recommended to use top-tier diesel. If you don't, you got to use an additive, and it's 18 bucks a bottle from General Motors per each tank, which gets um, – I'm going to just go ahead and say it. That's a little pricey for every time you get a full tank of gas to get, or diesel at 18 bucks. So let's 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 back the train up a little bit. Uh, I know we were talking a little offline about top tier diesel. You have a lot of information on this. I think the audience would love to hear. So for those who don't know, what is top tier diesel and kind of where is it at these days? Yeah, you know, the top tier diesel kind of came out. I think it was 2017 is when when it kind of really the push started. And it kind of flattened out pretty quickly because there were a lot of, you know, supply issues or some requirements it was cumbersome it was expensive for the retail you know gasoline and diesel distributor locations in order to put it out there um it it fell short on a lot of the other issues that are happening within diesel fuels um it specifically looked at detergent uh it kind of grouped the the diesel needs in with what the gasoline needs have been with top tier gas for you know previous 10 15 years or so uh, diesel's unique and it's it's got its own other set of circumstantial issues it's got winterization issues it's got there's there's some moisture there's uh fuel tank hygiene issues with diesel as well as detergent you know cetane uh, improvement and you know just lubricity other components that are of concern with diesel so you know from the get-go top tier was a little bit um, short on its its needs of what was these diesel engines really truly need and what the diesel fuel itself in the ground is dealing with. So uh, it, it was kind of cumbersome. It, it required the retailers to buy it at the, at the terminals as pre-treated. A lot of these locations were already doing a program on their own with a, their own diesel additive that was more comprehensive. Um, filtration requirements, uh, came down to the point where they were going to say, hey, no matter what time of year, it was 10 micron filtration. Well, during the cold winter months, you know, where we're zero or sub zero, a 10 micron uh, diesel filter on a dispenser is never going to allow the flow of diesel fuel um, to even get into your vehicle, let alone get through the pumps and out, out of the system. So there were there were a lot of hurdles that just kind of got in the way of this really taking off and, and being something. That being said, it's still a very important um, item to address of dealing with fuel qualities. Um, so, you know, the National Council of Weights and Measures came out and said in 2019, here's what we need to do for a premium diesel. So then it became a, a competition of top tier versus premium diesel fuel. And so once the NCWM actually put a, top, a premium diesel standard out there that dealt with fuel tank hygiene, that dealt with winterization, with dealt with cetane, as well as detergent standards, that really took over and took place of, of what top tier was trying to do at that point. So then at that point, kind of top tier dwindled off. That's why it's very difficult to find anybody that's selling a top tier diesel fuel uh, over the retail level. And you can find more and more of these people that are out there pushing a premium, quote unquote, premium diesel fuel um, at, in the marketplace that's that's readily available. Uh, you know, so that's kind of where, kind of the background of where those two items kind of branched off. And then kind of where we come in is we've been working with a lot of the companies that are offering a quote unquote premium diesel fuel not only through retail, but at, you know, commercial fueling, like card lock locations, bulk fuel deliveries, and sort of, you know, that sort of operation as well. So 
it's kind of it, where we work on the backside, providing the chemicals, knowing that what these engines need, but we also know what the fuel nationwide is, is lacking. Um, and that's what we spend most of our time is testing the fuels that are available out in the marketplace to know truly what are the shortcomings of that fuel? Is it a water issue? Is it a lack of uh, lubricity? Is, is it winterization during the winter months? So that's what we focus a lot of our efforts in our lab of testing, knowing exactly what the fuels in the regions are lacking. So I guess what I'm hearing you say is that the diesel fuel that comes in the, the fuel stations could have an issue with tanks. If the tank's right, if the, the quality of fuel is right, whatever, there's always big questions. But that's where like the premium fuel or top tier diesel is adding the conditioner to it. Whereas what you guys can offer as well is when you get that fuel, if you're questioning that, you have a additive that would make that fuel be premium, right? So I guess in the, just in a yeah. simple terms, like if you if you go get like your 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 basic diesel at any sort of store, it may not be that premium fuel, but you're gonna want the premium fuel because I've what I've seen online and things is you get bad injectors get plugged, you get bad performance, you just it's not a very uh, you may be harmful to your engine. And so there's some benefits there, right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, and so kind of what, you know, I, I like to always explain to people kind of in the fuel world, whether we're talking about diesel fuel or we're talking about gasoline at, at a retail, at the surface of a retail, if you pull into a, a Chevron gas station, for example, their gasolines are a Chevron gasoline it's got chevron detergent package the tecron it's got it's got the different you know you're getting a chevron gas branded gasoline okay. at that site at the same site you could be getting a branded chevron gasoline the diesel itself is an unbranded product so it's not a chevron diesel is stored at terminals and refineries much different than gasolines so if you go there, doesn't th that doesn't mean you're getting that brand of diesel fuel. So that yeah. being said, they add the detergent packages to their gasolines. They can control that. What they don't do is add a, a detergent package to the diesel fuel. So you get diesel is just diesel out in the marketplace. Um, and, and that's the biggest difference. It, it's a it's a common storage typically at the, the terminals and refineries for diesel fuel where gasoline is specified of, Hey, this is a Chevron gas. This is a shell gas. This is a, you know, you name it type of brand that's specific diesel's different in that, in that distribution channel of diesel fuel. Okay. So if diesel is basically the same, no matter where you go, the fuel that comes out of, of the, uh, the tank or into your tank, then, you know, why, why wouldn't that already have a treatment to it? Why wouldn't that already be ready to go for all these engines? Well, it's always, it's been the, the debate over the years is, you know, why, why aren't refineries, you know, why aren't these terminals, why aren't they already putting what the diesel fuel needs? And it's a great question. You know, it's one that we don't mind that they're not doing because we're able to do it with the customers. We're able to do it with a more, I would say fully formulated type of, product than basically just a base detergent or a base like in the winterization we're able to put a, a full package together for winterization for detergent for you know the you know cold weather starts with the cetane improver and combustion improvers and lubricity whereas if a terminal was just going to offer a winter diesel fuel they would put just an anti-gel chemistry in there and so it wouldn't be really making a a premium type diesel would make a winterized diesel fuel. Um, and so it, it allows us to go in and really put together a better package into that fuel for the end consumer.